two meetings. But we're really excited to have some direct contact with people and some honest conversations. Uh, it would be great if we could go around and everyone could introduce themselves. Uh, my name is, <laughs> it's been said 85 times tonight because I shared the wrong link, Mike Altenberger. Uh, I work with InFocus. If you don't know, InFocus is a local nonprofit. Uh, we take recent graduates from undergrad, masters, PhD programs, and put them uh, to work for local nonprofits and some industry doing all different types of projects and uh, supporting the community with innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, Alex, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, so I am an AmeriCorps member with the Engagement Economic Empowerment Team, and I live in Monroe Park. I just moved to Monroe Park. I'm from Muncie, and so I've been attending Monroe Park Neighborhood Association meetings, and I've also been in correspondence with Howard Park people. It's great to finally see your face, Mary. <laughs> Hi. As well as in correspondence with the NNN. Um, yeah, and I'm super pumped for this event. Well, let's keep it going, Alex. Why don't you uh, pick the next person to please introduce themselves? Okay, well, Pam already got called out. So how about <laughs> we get an intro from Pam Meyer? Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, my name is Pam Meyer. I'm, uh, my new position title is called Director of Neighborhoods. I've been with the city for a long time, done a lot of, all of that time has been involved in neighborhood work, um, particularly a portion of it in uh, neighborhood association development over the years. So a lot of our existing neighborhood associations, I remember sitting at tables and helping them write their bylaws and creating uh, these organizations around the community and helping them to uh, build capacity and to make sure there was communication among neighbors. So I guess in my mind, communication among neighborhood groups, among their own uh, constituents, and then with the city is the is the goal I have for for this particular group. That's great. Thanks, Pam. Could you uh, maybe pick the next person? Well, I'm going to pick Councilman Kenneth Lee. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I am Councilman Pastor Kenneth Lee, um, first district council person, newly appointed in July. <coughs> and um, I've been a pastor in, in South Bend for 20 years um, and uh, was a member, was vice president of the Far North Neighborhood Association um, and also helped with, back in the day, founding Lana LaSalle Area Neighborhood Association and getting that going um, in our area. Uh, I am a person who loves our community and uh, loves working with city government in order to make the voices of the people that may not be heard heard. So, and I'm also the uh, director of the Group Violence Intervention SAVE program, Standing Against Violence Every Day. Thank you, Councilman Pastor. Could you pick the next person? Regina Williams. Come on down. <laughs> Come on down. Hey, Pastor Lee and everybody. Um, I'm Regina Williams Preston. I am a former council person. I'm a teacher by trade. Um, so I do a lot of advocacy work with schools, but also in neighborhoods. So I'm really excited to see this process moving forward with the uh, neighborhood council. Um, excited, there's so many competent people just making it happen. And so to see so many people on the call, it's exciting. We're all, we're getting it together. So I currently uh, live in Kennedy Park um, and I uh, support also the far Northwest because that's the neighborhood I was born and raised in along with Kenneth, pastor. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and um, so I am going to pick Marilyn. Hello, everyone. My name is Marilyn Gushaw, and I'm representing the Lincoln Bendix Park Neighborhood Association, which is a fairly new neighborhood association. Um, it's, uh, it, it's right across from Kennedy Park, and the neighbors there are actually meeting to bring some some brings people to the table to help 
make some changes and help stabilize the neighborhood because it is going through a few changes. Um, I've been active in the community for a long time, used to be a community organizer for near Northwest neighborhood. Um, I currently live within the Kennedy Park neighborhood association boundaries. Um, just, for, just looking forward to working with this organization here or this council here and um, excited to see that the city is involved and wanting to be more involved with the neighborhoods, yay. And I'm going to pick, let's see, one, two, three. So it looks like Mary Bundy. Oh, yeah, that's me. Let's see. <laughs> oh, am I, I'm off mute now, right? Right. You yes. can see me? Okay. Hi. Um, thanks for picking me. Um, I feel like, you know, I'm in the, the team, like I wasn't the last one. Um, <laughs> So my name's Mary Bundy. Um, currently, I'm the president of the Howard Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, we've been pretty dormant. Um, we haven't been doing much and, uh, and we're just kind of uh, struggling as an organization right now to hold ourselves together as a neighborhood association. And I think uh, because of all the changes that are happening which a lot of people would think are really good. Um, and, and new development is, is good, but I, um, I think it creates a different kind of challenge in order to bring people together within that, that new development. Um, I think you know, just getting people wanting to reach out and connect with uh, their new neighbors and, uh, so um, there's a challenge here and this pandemic didn't really help with any of that. I, um, I don't work in uh, any kind of uh, city or organization or you know, a capacity other than being president of the Howard Park Neighborhood Association. I'm an occupational therapist for the, the VA in Mishawaka. And so I, I'm pretty busy with my job, but uh, I am excited about um, kind of reigniting uh, this neighborhood spirit that I've, um, I've had envisioned and it's just never quite gotten there. And, and I'm hoping that um, I can get it there and uh, people will rush in and take over and I can just enjoy. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. Oh, so I have to pick someone? Sure. Yeah. I can't see anyone. I can, you, you want me to do the honors then? Please. Okay. Thank uh, you. I'm going to, I'm going to jump to Rodney. Let's see if we can get. Okay. Well, well oh. can you hear me? Can you, can you hear me now? Yep, we got you, Rodney. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rodney Gatson. I'm the founder and president of the South Bend Tenant Association. Our work has been with the Western Manor tenants, and we created a tenant association there, now called the Square. We work with uh, Miami uh, Hills residents as well as um, working with their tenant needs. We're now working currently with the uh, Rabbi Schumann Plaza and working with HUD and the South Bend Housing Authority in trying to transition and house those residents that we represent. Our partnership goes with, along with the Notre Dame Law Clinic, Christian Charities, well, we work with um, Real Services, we we basically we're an outreach and information beacon, education beacon. We also partner with South Bend um, First Source Bank, which we're getting together um, empowerment through videos and uh, chats. This pandemic made us kind of change our rearrange and change our thinking. So we're also working with people on doing affordable housing. We have. 70 tenants left to house out of the 120 
that was in that place. So if anybody knows that we can gather resources, because they have until March the 8th to uh, find housing. And if anybody wants to be more, get more specific for me, meet me after the meeting, uh, take some of my information down. And uh, we have a meeting ourselves tomorrow at seven o'clock and I will invite you to that meeting to make it more informative to you to let you know that hey we do need some partnership throughout the city to help those people we trying to um, we trying to uh, ward off homelessness Did thank you, you hear very, me? thank mm-hmm. you very much mr. Gatson you're welcome uh, Mary Malone, thank you for your patience. Somebody's got to go close to last. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm, Mary said I was going to pick last on the team. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mary Malone. And um, so I have chosen to live more than half my life in South Bend, Indiana. So I lived a bunch of places and I ended up coming back to, to South Bend in 1990. So I've been here for Now you guys know how old I am, just over half of my life. So I live in the Sunny Mead neighborhood. Um, I'm secretary of the Sunny Mead Neighborhood Association. We haven't really been meeting very often, but I am also one of the administrators of our Facebook page. And um, it is a low drama page, but lots of information gets communicated by and through that particular page. Um, I also, Coincidentally, um, my office, I can almost see from my house, um, is at uh, Inovia Consulting, which is right next door to Jeannie's. So at Twickenham and Mishawak Avenue, there's an old building across from there. And there's, so I, I live my life here in South Bend and I take it very seriously uh, to make it a better place. Um, I recognize many of you from different meetings and marches and protests and all those kinds of things. I don't think I know anybody in the group, but um, I'm very glad to be part of it. I'm a serial volunteer and somehow somebody said, Mary, go do this. And I said, okay, I'm in. So there you go. (laughs) So all good causes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. I lived in Sunny Mead for a long time and I'm on the Facebook page and and low drama doesn't mean no drama on that Facebook page, but it it is low drama, that's true. We'll try and get the last person. Uh, we don't have your name. If you would, uh, if you'd be willing. Name. <laughs> name. Uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Tim Corcoran. Uh, I don't know. I, guess I just came in as a. Oh name. man, we got the surprise. Oh man, we got <laughs> Pam and Tim. Oh man. Yeah, I should probably put on my video so you can see me again. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, Kenneth, thanks for that. I I spend a lot of time giving Kenneth a hard time, uh, and then and then Pam as well. But I'm the director of planning for the city of South Bend, um, and uh, what I really like about what's happening here is that when we want to engage with neighborhoods, uh, the best way to do it is with a strong neighborhood organization, uh, and we need more of those in South Bend because it's a two way conversation and. Um, uh, we don't like to just do things. We don't want to just do things without, uh, you know, knowing what the neighborhood is is interested in, what they what they think is needed for their neighborhood, and so this is a really important thing that we need. And um, and so yeah, looking forward to hearing uh, all that comes out of it. Sorry about that, Tim. Thank you very much, though. Well, I don't know why I just said name. I, I well because we shared the link that was to my registration, so everyone was Mike Altenberger. So we just wow. put name for people and then asked them to change it. So gotcha. Yep. Um, so let's get let's get into it. Uh, we have a little bit of time to discuss things, and really, what we were, were were hoping to to find out first is when you got the invitation to this, when you heard about um, we were having this listening to session to discuss something called a neighborhoods council what jumped into your mind first? Was there something that you were hoping that it would do? Did you have some idea of what success for it uh, would look like? Um, Or, and did you have kind of some questions that were, that were part of that? Uh, So really open-ended question first about what you were hoping um, the neighborhoods council would, would start addressing when, when you were invited. 
Um, I have a thought on that. Am I on? I have mm -hmm. no idea. I'm yep, so we can hear you. You're good, man. Okay. Thank you. Good. Um, my idea of the neighborhood council is each neighborhood has its own issues, its own pluses, um, and being able to really help each other out. Um, and, and because every neighborhood is, is so different, so one neighborhood may have a lot of uh, local enthusiasm, like friendships in the neighborhood. Um, and another neighborhood, you know, may just be um, more business. I, I always think of um, my two favorite neighborhoods because they're closest to me and I've, I've uh, interacted with them over the years is Sunny Mead and uh, River Park. And I always thought River Park, um, was just so together, like they had the parade and um, they just seemed like, you know, everybody pitched in in some way. And um, so how, you know, having conversations between the neighborhoods so that a neighborhood, we need all the neighborhoods. We can't just have uh, some neighborhoods, a few of them, being the neighborhoods um, and finding a way that we can communicate and kind of build each other up. And, and that's kind of how I saw the council. That's great, thank you. Councilman Lee? I would like to say when I, when I heard about the, this opportunity for neighbors and neighborhoods to come together, I got excited because a lot of times, because uh, city officials uh, m may not actually know what's going on in neighborhoods, and I found that you get a lot more information from the people who are boots on the ground and grassroots and for the people who care about their neighborhoods. So a lot of times neighborhoods get overlooked, and so having individuals from um, particular neighborhoods, being able to have a forum to speak or to be able to get ideals. Um, I was excited about that because um, it, it's amazing how on one street, it can totally change by what hundred block you're in. And uh, so being able to know about those dynamics that go on in those neighborhoods um, is important. And if we're really going to see transformation in, in South Bend, it really does have to take, you know, most, most people, or there are some people who feel like I pay taxes, but I don't get anything back. So if we can be able to provide services and bring things back to um, neighborhoods that normally get overlooked, I think it would even help people feel better about what's going on in our city and, and to feel like they're a part of our city. And so I'm excited about an opportunity to serve on something like that to, to get that attention to neighborhoods. Thank you. You have John's. So I'll, I'll offer up, I um, uh, somebody pointed out the post to me and said, hey, you should learn more about this. I've, I had attended a bunch of different meetings over the last couple of years with neighborhood association groups. I think one of them was at the River Park Library where we just brought some different people together. And I just, I believe in the city, again, I chose to move here and live here. And I think we're all better off when we're all together with making things better together. There's lots that we can work on. We have different Talents. I mean, Sunny Mead has like no businesses in our neighborhood. You know, so we're kind of limited on the e you're on the camera side. Um, but we have a lot of people who live here who care greatly about the city. And and I just, I you know, I don't know that I represent them in any formal way. Um, but I'm interested personally in the issue, and I I want to be helpful to other people who live in the place that I love to live. So that's what brings me here. 
Um, mm -hmm. Just really quickly, and um, basically, I always people talk about like, well, what was it like, you know, being on the council and so on and so forth. And I think what one of the things I always talk about is how uh, one of the greatest lessons um, in being an elected official is for me the uh, learning, realizing that you know the people your represent it's a representative government, of course. And really the people are not just your boss, but they're also the experts. Um, and the best way to, similar to what Kenneth, uh, Pastor Lee was saying, you know, the best way to really solve the problem, any problem, is to engage with the people who are experiencing the problem. Because they're experts, they, they know everything about the problem. And usually they have really great ideas for how to solve the problem. And what they don't have is typically a connection, you know, with the city government or resources or money to actually implement those solutions. And so this kind of direct, like, this is what, you know, we were kind of building for is this concept of really organizing neighborhoods and having that direct connection with those folks and using that as the primary organizing tool to really solve problems and make the difference in people's lives that they can see, touch, and feel. And so that's what I'm excited about this group. I think that you know this is the direction that it's going. Um, it's absolutely necessary, and um, you know it's about this collaborative model uh, where everybody has a voice, an equal voice. We share ideas, and we think about ways to move forward that's in the best interest of everyone. So that common good. Um, so that's the philosophical and very tangible living on the West side, you know, and Pam knows this, you've heard me say this a million times. Candace, Pastor Lee has heard me say this many times. I'm ready here to fight gentrification, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's my heart is that the people on the West side that we uh, are engaged with we participate in and we benefit from the redevelopment that's coming. And I have full faith that this administration is interested in doing that. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, I'd like to say that I'm excited about this initiative from the standpoint of it's an opportunity to brand our neighborhoods. I think that's one thing, even though our neighborhoods have names a lot of people are un still un a lot of people that live in South Bend are still unaware of the various neighborhoods that we have throughout South Bend, and in other cities, especially in the urban areas. You know, I can say, "Oh, I live in Butler Targeting. I live in um, Old North Side. I live such and such," and people are aware. They they don't necessarily know what street I live on, but they know about where I live. So I see this as an opportunity to. Um, build pride among the neighbors because their neighborhood now is going to be a focal point. And I also see it as an opportunity to work with the city and hopefully give the, the neighborhood associations more support because we need support. Um, we need financial support as well as people support. Um, so I, I just see lots of opportunities, doors opening and the expansion of neighborhood power because of this um, this, this partnership that's being formed. So what, um, going off what I was hearing uh, people say in different ways, are there particular challenges that you would like to see the Neighborhoods Council start addressing and looking at? And that can be uh, for your own neighborhood, um, or it can be uh, something that you think uh, uh, works across different neighborhoods, but is, is possible to achieve through better, better collaboration. Yes, Councilman. I'll go. I, I, one of the biggest challenges that I am running into and I'm hearing from people is, is streets in inner city neighborhoods um, that have, haven't been paved. So, um, people, streets, we know that curved sidewalks, people may not believe it, but it makes a difference. The other things that we're seeing, especially in the first district is uh, we have a lot of old trees that live, that, that are 
that have grown in our, our neighborhoods. And I would love to see us be able, I, I don't know if this is politically correct or not, but to cut down the old trees and plant new trees. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. But what, what happens is um, like today, when we have warm days and then we have these freezing cold, cold days, it, these trees can't handle it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it was, a, it was a lot of damage to people's cars who in some of the inner cities, they have to park on the street and you wake up and find a tree on your car. That, mm -hmm. That's not a good, that's not a good, good day. Or because the trees have overgrown so much that they block out the street lights. So I'm, I'm hearing from people of ways that we can get rid of old trees, plant new ones, um, and, and be able to put more lighting in the neighborhood, like what they did on Diamond Street. Although the houses have not changed much, um, it looks totally different when you drive down Diamond Street at night. And it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's part of uh, of, 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 of the district. It doesn't look like the area. And if we could do that, working through neighborhood associations and working through neighborhoods in other areas, I think it would really improve the quality of life of people uh, in 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 our in our inner city. So that's one of the things I would love to see us work on. How can we make our neighborhoods look better? And, 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 and hear that from the people, so. Thank you. Is it all right if I say something to that? Of course. Um, I know I, I was like pulling my hair out about the old trees, but there is a place for old trees and I totally get what you're saying. There's a, a, type of tree that will not grow to the heights of an oak or a maple or, um, but will still add beautification without growing too tall and too cumbersome to um, one block out the lights and uh, create that uniform look. Um, so, so I just wanted to say that even though I was pulling my hair out about the old trees, um, I, I do understand they have their place and smaller trees are probably better in neighborhoods. Uh, just because of the amount of damage that mm -hmm. puts people in potential of, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. that, would, that would be something that it would take a person who lives in the neighborhood and, and it's different for people because those who have nicer houses have driveways. So it's different, but people who have to park on the street yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. And I'm just, I'm, I'm hearing that. And I'm like, I don't know. I can't cut down trees. I'm, I'm the councilman, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm hearing from a lot of people. So, and it, the trees know. break up the concrete too, and uh, sidewalks and all that stuff. So maybe know. there's a happy medium there. Yeah. Um, because not all old trees need to be, you mentioned it, some are just overgrown mm -hmm. and maybe they just need to be pruned. If mm -hmm. there was some, I think it's the electric company that's been going through the alleys and, and they've been cutting back and cutting down some of the overgrown trees, which, and it, it's opened up the alleys in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very appreciative of that, but I know um, in some cities they've, I don't know how they do this, but some of the older trees form an arch and they go from one side of the street to the other side of the street, like a bridge. Mm. but that's like they've been trained to do that I mm. mean maybe there's something that can be done with the trees to um, keep their beauty and yet make them safer for the neighbors that live there I, th I think those are all great points and um, as I had to get a tree removed from my yard and I, I so I have many thoughts about this but since we have this group together uh, mm. for not that much time um, if we could uh, you know, just maybe come back a little bit to that idea of challenges. Certainly, I think this is a great example, though, of what neighborhood council could do is when an idea is presented, having that opportunity to work through it and consider it from different perspectives. So I think this is something that's really important to take away from that. Just making sure that we have time and space for these conversations is a really important part of what the neighborhoods council can do. 
Um, and just wanted to see if anyone else had any other thoughts about kind of challenges um, that they're hoping that that the neighborhoods council uh, could could focus on, um, could look at, uh, and that and part of that could also be, you know, what voices do we need to bring to the table? Do we make sure that we're there for this for this uh, event? All the neighborhoods uh, neighborhood associations were invited, um, as well as a couple local uh, nonprofit organizations. But you know, just wanted to open this up as well to uh, the voices that are important to be there, or certain other ideas of challenges that it would be great for the neighborhoods council to address. I would like to see code um, enforce more. Um, I would like to see them improve their code enforcement on businesses in my neighborhood. Um, Amen. <laughs> there are businesses, in our, you know, that have signs that are that need to be taken down, put up. Investments need to be made made into those businesses. There are businesses that have overgrown brush. They have uh, a lot of litter on their parking lots. Um, and I'm sure in a different type neighborhood, we may not see it as, as look as bad as it does. And I, and I would just like to see Cole do a better job in my neighborhood when it comes to enforcing ordinances on businesses. Uh, can anybody hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. I, to piggyback off of what she just said, I'm, our organization is kind of a microcosm of this association that you're building. The South Bend Tenant Association, we're there in everybody's neighborhood that has a tenant. The things that I get to hear from assisted living places, low income housing is what we specialize in. Security, lighting is a bad problem on the west side of South Bend. I'm a long time resident in Belleville and LaSalle, the lakeside over that area. Right there off Washington and Falcon Street, the lighting in that area is horrible. Crime should, crime should just come in and fester all over the place. Why? Because if the place is not secured. Lighting is horrible in the parking lot area. I mean, they put new lights down Washington, but in that back corner area, there could be harm to a bunch of seniors. Another place is like that, Carl King Towers. And these two places, their elevators still don't work. I mean, there have been ongoing maintenance problems in the urban area for decades. Look at Rabbi Schumann, the problem that we're inheriting right now. We're inheriting this problem because of lack of leadership, management, and neglect. But these people's voices don't get heard. That's, uh, that's the reason why I even created an organization so tenants' voices would get heard. This is what I want to come out of, you know, being a part of this association, this council, to get their voices in to get some things addressed in a political, private sector, and it, even just neighborhood-wide. Because we, these are taxpayers, but a lot of people politicians and et cetera, don't listen to the concerns of those people. Western Manor shouldn't have got as bad as it was. Pete Buttigieg even said at the time when he was um, running for office, this is a humanitarian problem. I do have a humanitarian problem, but I can't just do this by myself. I need help. These people need help. And Pastor Lee, I understand some of your constituents because I have some of them in my area as well. But how do we team up together to make low income people feel as, I look at Martin Luther King, the Fair Housing Act of 1968. And one thing, there should be equality and fair balance for all people. There's none in South Bend, Indiana. And the laws here are the worst laws for tenants in the United States, something has to change with that. Okay, I got off my sofa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Gesson. I'd like to go back to uh, code for a moment. 
um, because um, that is kind of our um, our way to kind of police uh, people standing up and doing the right thing in the neighborhood, uh, like taking in their trash or um, those kinds of things. But to the to the point of code enforcement in general, I'd like the council to be able to look at ways that code enforcement is um, only operating under their policies and procedures. And, Correct. and their policies and procedures can sometimes be the obstacle, can sometimes be the stumbling block. Um, for them to be able to do a decent job. I'll give a very quick example. Um, taking in trash cans after, after trash pickup. Um, there's one street in my neighborhood that became basically trash can alley, but it was a street. And I called code enforcement and I was told in a very nice way that the difficulty for them is they go out and they issue a warning or a statement, I'm not sure what it's called. And then they have so many days, um, and then they have to make time, they have to have a person go back out and check to see after that many days has anything changed before they can even do anything. And so sometimes, you know, the policies. So I think becoming, um, students of what those policies are and then ways that uh, we can, I don't know who changes those policies or makes adjustments to those policies. Is it through the, is it through our council members and voting? Um, is it a state mandate? I, you know, I don't know where those policies come from. Thank, thank you, Mary. And uh, mm -hmm. I, again, I'm sorry to be rude, but you know, the, the time is limited and just want to make sure we get to some, some key questions. I would also say that, um, you know, we had some introduction a little bit to what a neighborhoods council would be. I think certainly part of the hope of what we're, what we're planning to build into the structure of this is very much have city representatives be present um, to hear these concerns in a direct way and to respond to them. And also to do a little bit of um, educating of, of citizens and residents um, on what the city's resources are and what the roles of different uh, parts of the city's government are so that uh, the neighborhood council's member have a better understanding of, of how things work and, and can be more effective that way. Um, I, I would it would be great if, and I just really do want to thank everyone for their honesty and bringing these issues, because this is great to see what kind of questions are going to come up when, when we have these meetings. Um, I would, I, a great question, I think two kind of key questions to end on would be, people are uh, already involved in their neighborhood associations. Uh, the mayor has committed to a quarterly meeting with the neighborhood's council, but is there an, a role for the neighborhood's council to meet uh, in addition to that? Would it, how often should it meet? Would it be a monthly thing uh, every two weeks or, or part of that kind of quarterly session? I'll say every month. Every month? I would say every two months. Okay. I would, but, Ms. Mary uh, 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 every, every Every quarter or, or every third month. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Malone, were you going to say something? I guess I would like to, I mean, why are we meeting? What is the purpose? What is the agenda? What are we going to get done? And what are we going to accomplish before the next meeting? Y'all are lovely people. Like, and this is fun. <laughs> but like, and so I could do this once a month or every other week or every two months. But why? And so I'm much more about like, what are we, you know, we all have limited amount of time. We all have lots of people who call on our limited amount of time. M make it worth it and I'll be here every other week if you want. So, you know, it, it, I think it becomes learning what you can do for and to and together, so. So I'd like to speak to that be. if it's okay. Um, I, I agree about needing to know what we're meeting for. 
I think a good idea is like so many people have brought up different things, um, inclusiveness, uh, investment in the neighborhood, code, um, lighting, trees, um, all those things. And we're, we can't really address all of them. So I think one of the roles of a meeting before our quarterly meeting is as a group, we can um, decide what we want to focus on for that quarterly meeting. And so that's my suggestion. Thank you. I agree yeah. with her. I agree if we have to brainstorm and prioritize a list, yeah. like she just stated. I agree with that. You brainstorm and say, okay, what's, on, what's the important, what can we get after? And then pinpoint it and say, okay, from one to 10, like David Letterman, Here's the top 10 list. Here's what we're going to address. This is what we're going to target. And we set a date. We set a target date on also on when we start it and when shall it and when shall it finish to go to the next prioritized thing on the list. Yep, that that is great. And thank you very much. I'm only jumping in here because I think we're I'm being told we're running low on time, but for sure. Uh, we will be providing structure and uh, that kind of agenda process and having very intentional conversations about how we can provide feedback to the city and really make sure that the council has a purpose um, and making sure that it, it really is focusing on the issues that are important to people. And we're really committed to doing that in a way that the Neighborhoods Council has direct uh, input on shaping that. We also just want to make it as easy as possible for people. So I think we're going to put some structure in place. And then when we meet again, we'll have uh, options for people to review and make and make decisions, uh, make decisions on. Um, I just want to say really quickly, I put some ideas in the chat. So I don't know if you're paying attention to that. People aren't using it very much. So I just wanted you to know that's where my, my input is. I've been copying them, pasting them, pasting them into my notes, Regina. <laughs> okay, cool. Good, because they're too tiny. I can't read them, even <laughs> with my glasses. <laughs> Do I have a second? Just, Pam, it looks like you're taking notes. Um, and we're talking about policies. I live in an area where there's a lot of rentals, and I noticed that a lot of the people that move out just dump their, their living things. Anyway, I've called and tried to report it and, and the policy is too complicated to get the, to do anything about it. So need to be some changes there. You, you look at that trash for a couple of months. And that might be code also. Oh, it is code. Oh, okay, you already know that, mm -hmm. yeah. I think, uh, okay. is this breakout room gonna close? Yeah. We got 40 about seconds? 40, 40 seconds left. 37, yep. 35 seconds, 37 <laughs> seconds. Spending time with you guys. I, thank I do you. Want to thank everyone so much for uh, participating. Please keep an eye out for future communications from us. Um, and we're really excited about this. We think this is a great opportunity. And this has been really helpful for us to uh, get a feel for what we need to focus on and the work that we need to do to build something and make sure that it's successful in a way that all of your input uh, is taken seriously and, uh, and made to, um, to last into the future. So thank you very much. And, and, uh, and do you know if it'll be Tuesday night? Is that the designated 